Okay, does everybody remember what we say? All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. You just made my life right there. Uh, so I wanted to uh, ask you a question, which is why would we hear this gospel reading today, all these names? As, as a priest, it's one of the most difficult gospel readings to get through. And even if we didn't say it right, you probably wouldn't know that we mispronounced half the names anyways. But the reason for this gospel reading is to show the lineage of Christ, to show that he came from a line that was kingly and that he came from a line that was priestly. So those two areas, the two lines that were in history that if you were from one family, you were a kingly family. If you were another family, you were a priestly family. He came from both of those lines. But that's not the point I wanted to make about today's gospel reading. What I wanted to bring to your attention was the part that we hear where Joseph, finding that the Virgin Mary was with child, resolved to divorce her quietly. Why? And I think there's an important semblance of time that we have to understand in this gospel reading. Otherwise, it gets confusing. Because many people think Joseph marries the Virgin Mary. Then he finds out she's pregnant or she's pregnant before or whatever. It, the, the, the order in which we understand it gets confusing for us. And we say, well, well, wouldn't he have known? Wasn't he told? And there's an important thing to understand here is the history of the Virgin Mary in, in the timeline. Now, the timeline is some 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 place that we read about in our Bible study last week in the Proto Evangelion of James. And it speaks about the Virgin Mary coming of age. She's she was brought into the temple. So for those who may not know, the Virgin Mary lived in the temple from the years of two, when she was two years old, to twelve years old. And she was at the point in the temple where she had to leave. They wouldn't allow adult women to stay in the temple as she was dedicated. So she, she was at the point of growing, maturing, and they said that she had to be taken out of the temple in order not to uh, have that temple and that holiness and that purity and that simplicity of virginity to be in the temple. So she was to be taken out of the temple. But she was not to be put in the commonplace of the world, but to continue this life of chastity, of holiness, of godliness, of dedication to God. So what did they do? They called in widowers, older men who already had families, who were significantly older, and their wives had passed away, and they said, one of you is going to take care of the Virgin Mary. And by this miracle of the dove and the staff that comes, uh, the dove comes out of the staff, we see that Joseph is the one who's chosen. But Joseph was also a carpenter. He was a builder. He was a builder of homes. And he leaves to go away. After he takes the Virgin Mary, he says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away and I'm going to start working on homes. I'll come back. And then we hear the story of the Virgin Mary that we hear on her birthday. And we also hear it um, in other points in the year where the Virgin Mary goes to Elizabeth, right, the mother of St. John. And she goes, and Elizabeth is pregnant with St. John, and the Virgin Mary comes, and St. John jumps in her womb. And we hear that story of the, the Virgin Mary's greeting to Elizabeth made St. John jump in her womb. But then it says she remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. Why did she stay with her three months? Well, the assumption is that Joseph takes the Virgin Mary out of the temple, takes care of her, and then says, I have to go do my work. The Virgin Mary then, when he's gone, is told, you will conceive and bear Christ. She is conceived by the Holy Spirit. She is pregnant with Christ. And Joseph is not around yet, so she goes to her kinswoman, Elizabeth, and stays there for three months. So she's pregnant. She's growing. She's starting to show. Joseph is out. He comes back and sees her pregnant and says, what did I do? I left, and now there's this shame of 
the pregnancy. I don't, I don't know how this happened and I should have stayed here. And he's com- contemplating. He says, this can't be. This can't be of God. And he's there. And you see in the icons of the nativity, you, you can't see it from here, but you see Joseph in the bottom corner of the nativity icon and he's, he's got his hand on his head and he's wrestling with this message. And he says, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how this could be. And Archangel Gabriel comes and says, do not fear for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be Christ, the Savior. But it's important for us to have this timeline to understand exactly why Joseph would say he resolved to divorce her quietly. It doesn't make any sense unless we have the rest of the story tied in and understand that Joseph was not around for that message being delivered. And when she came back home after three months of being with uh, Elizabeth, then is the time that he finds out. So I wanted you to keep that in mind and understand that the the life of the Virgin Mary is, is a unique life that is not captured necessarily just in the Gospels. If you come in for the sermon, okay, let me just side. If you're coming in while I'm speaking, at the very beginning, just so you know, you can come in, but please sit in the back. If you want to sit closer up in the front, then please wait till I'm done. And then once I turn around and go, then you can come all the way to the front. But if you're coming in just to hear the sermon, please just sit in the back pew. And if you would like to relocate after I turn around, that's fine too. Um, Just a side note, I do things differently and I'm going to explain them as I do them so that you understand as well. Uh, So we, we see Joseph is this caretaker of the Virgin Mary. And it wasn't about anything that he wanted the child to be his own or that he was going to uh, think other things, but he was told by the archangel, this child will be holy. And I want you to think about the message of Joseph today. We hear of the lineage of the fathers, but I also want you to think about how he struggled. He's a figure that comes into history, into the story of the birth of Christ, and then is out. And we don't hear much after Christ is born about Joseph. But I want you to think about his message and just how much he had to take in and understand. In a time where he was older, where he was already widowed, his children were were grown, and then he's presented with this young woman that he's supposed to be the caretaker for, She's pregnant, and then ultimately he understands that that child is the Son of God. So when we think of Joseph and we think of the the birth of of Christ, uh, think about how much he had to understand in a very short amount of time and how difficult it was for him to put all the pieces together. A man who was pious and holy and is a saint in our church but a man who was presented with this message that was extraordinary. And yet he took it, he bore it, and he did the best that he could do, uh, raising uh, Christ as a small child and being with the Virgin Mary. So in these days, think of him, think of this life that we have as well and how God is speaking to us and how he's asking us to listen to the messages that may be difficult for us to understand may be difficult for us to apply in our lives and to take that message and to pray and to think about it and let the angels speak to us and guide us and let the the writings and the prayers and the sacraments of the church inspire us and move us forward so that whatever God has for his will for us and he he has a plan for each and every one of us, whatever that is, that we can understand it and not doubt, not be tempted, and not say, this cannot happen. Because as we know, with God, everything is possible, and without him, nothing is possible. May you continue to understand that you need him in order to have the possibilities of growth in your life, your spiritual growth, your physical growth, your wisdom, your piety, all these things that we want in our lives, and especially peace, are the gifts that come from growing in God and accepting his will and asking him to be with us always. Amen.